let's give the cast and crew and, and the author here a big uh, round of applause for the world premiere of Monkey Beach. My name's Damian Gillis. I'm the grandson of Bill and Norma Young, the, uh, the founders and owners of this uh, historic theater here, Tilcom Twin Theaters. And we are our first guests here, we're so privileged to be able to welcome to the stage Eden Robinson, the author of Monkey Beach, Son of a Trickster, and many other wonderful books. She's an award-winning author and member of the Heisla and Helsic Nations. Trickster, a new series, premiered at TIFF and uh, is going to be launching on CBC in a couple of weeks. So yeah. big year for, for her and welcome <laughs> to the Telcom Twin Theater. Oh, thank you so much for having me and thank you all for your, for your, oh, I, I recognize so many people here and so many people were involved in turning Monkey Beach the movie into a reality. Uh, I, I just want to thank you so much. I know how much work that was. Uh, and if there's a takeaway from this, it's that your stories are important. Uh, the world needs more of your stories. I would also like to invite to join us on the stage Erica Wilson and her daughter Tiani Stevens, who are both uh, actors in the film. Uh, please come up and take your seats over here, please. Thank you. So, thank you very much for both of you for joining us here tonight. What are, what are you proudest of seeing uh, your book adapted to the big screen here? Um, just how many people from uh, from the whole of the Northwest that were in there. I kept going, ah, I know them, ah, I know them. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was uh, wonderful and distracting. <laughs> well, how, how about seeing that your territory depicted on, on camera, the village and, and the ocean, Douglas Channel, some of these places that are obviously near and dear to your heart. How did that translate through the cinematography and seeing that representing in film? Well, I remember those, those six weeks while they were filming, and it was one of those glorious uh, late summer falls where the weather was absolutely just amazing. It was perfect. It was sunny. So what I'm afraid of is that people will watch the movie and come up, ex <laughs> come up expecting all the sunshine. <laughs> I think there was a drop of rain in the whole film, was there? Or, or snow for that matter. Especially after the summer we had. There you go. Uh, the cinematography was absolutely stunning. That was gorgeous. I love the, like, uh, all the drone shots and the whales. And, yeah. uh, it, it was, it was uh, particularly powerful seeing like, the, the mountains and Monkey Beach. What's it like as an author when you, you obviously wrote this book, I think you began in the late 1990s, 99 or something like that, in the process, and then published it in 2002? Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm a very slow writer. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it was more like mid-90s then? <laughs> Early 90s. Early 90s, there you go, okay. So this is, this is really a 30-year project we're talking about here, because 10 years for the book, and then another 20 years, almost 18 years or something, for the adaptation in, in, yeah, into the I film. Yeah, think, I think Loretta first approached me in 2002. Wow. Um, about a year after the paperback came out. So it was, uh, her journey was a lot longer than mine was. <laughs> So let, let's give a big hand to uh, the director, Loretta Sarah Todd, who's not here tonight. She's at the Vancouver premiere. But for for her vision and, and persistence, really, yes. to get this made. So this is your baby. You, this book, you put it out. I guess you had a book of short stories, trap lines before yes. that, and then award-winning as well. And then to put so much of, of yourself in your family and your, your knowledge of, of the territory into this book, and then hand that over to... To a film, and obviously you have to make choices and, and mm -hmm. changes in order to fit that into a different kind of format. But what was that process like in terms of giving up a little bit of control over kind of the, the, the reinvention of this story? <laughs> your, your sister was, was involved in the production as well. Is that uh, right, she Carla? Was, so she she was. was looking out for you to make yeah. sure that everything was... 
uh, she has always been my champion. Um, the the whole process of screenwriting for me was uh, was challenging. It's a, it's a form that I didn't really. Uh, Loretta asked me to write the adaptation myself, uh, so I tried for about three years and <laughs> ended up with like a three hundred page screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> so Which was still a hundred pages <laughs> shorter than the book. So that was. <laughs> uh, so she really wanted me to write it. So I fired myself, and uh, I have decided, like, yeah, it, it's just not uh, writing for a screenplay or TV. It's just not for me. Well, that's one of the, one of the wonderful things about the book is just the the way the freedom, I guess, that you mm. have to play around with time you know bouncing back and forth through the memories and uh, and all these different kind of timescapes that the character goes through and oh yeah and the internal monologue and all these things i, I guess it's which is a big challenge representing that in film and i i think they did a wonderful job taking taking some of those kind of that internal yeah uh, story and putting it onto a very visual sort of format like that yes um when they were first playing with the structure um, I was sad that there were some things that were missing, and they said, we just don't have the budget for it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of water scenes, so we're going to have to figure out ways to do it without this, this, and this. Yeah. Uh, and as a writer, uh, I don't need a budget or special effects. <laughs> like, the, the, all the crow scenes there, um, they were filming the, the crows in uh, Vancouver on a green screen. Uh, and because it was a particularly busy summer, um, all the crows had been hired. <laughs> so those are actually uh, two different ravens. Uh, and I was in the studio in Vancouver when they were filming uh, with Loki. Uh, so all the swooping shots, like when you when the crows swoop down, uh, that was uh, all filmed against the green screen. And um, he did really, really well until he was full. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> then he flew up in the rafters and wouldn't do anything, and that was it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say then they had to call the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't able to spend a whole lot of time on the production. Yeah. Obviously, you're working on other projects, but... Uh, what were some some of the kind of moments that uh, kind of were were fun for you when you happened to get a chance to to be on set? Uh, well, as as those of you who were in the film shoot, uh, a lot of it took place in Hirsch Creek. <laughs> so I went down to Hirsch Creek, and the um, uh, they were filming two scenes. One of them where Mama O was with Lisa, and she had the the mask on her head. Uh, and that was incredible. And then they were filming uh, Mike in the the Bagus suit, the Bagus costume, uh, and he was his job was to like run. <laughs> <laughs> so while they were sitting up, we were chatting, and it, it was a really convincing costume. <laughs> so I was talking just just chit chatting with Bagus and Hirsch Creek. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Just talking about the Blue Jays game and whatever. Uh, did you ask him for a six-pack of coconut while you were out? He got that a lot. I did want to ask you about uh, your other project, uh, Trickster, Son of a Trickster, now called Trickster for the, the mm -hmm. CBC series. Yes. Uh, you, that's a, a lot of uh, all these years of writing, and now all of a sudden it's all happening at once for you, I guess. Uh, it's a pretty big During year. COVID. Yeah. This is the best we could do for a red carpet uh, opening here. Everybody with masks and. Uh, what was it, what, what's that been like? That process and and what are you? You're also you're working on the third trickster book currently, yes. or is that yeah? Oh, that's finished. That's finished now. That's and finished. you you were you were in my hometown, Campbell River, I believe, yes. recently with the Hag Brown Writers and Res Writer in Residence position. Yes. You were doing some of the writing of that book there. Is, is that, uh, I did was the that? second draft there. The, se the second draft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was the Hag Brown Writer in Residence for five months, and uh, about halfway through COVID. <laughs> uh, so the first draft of the third book in the trilogy is called Return of the Trickster. And the 
in the first draft, I've lived with the characters for so long. So uh, I didn't want anything bad to happen to any of them. Um, so it was a really lovely, everyone gets what they want kind of book. Uh, so my editor said it, that was great, but kind of boring. <laughs> so if I could punch up the drama a bit. So uh, I think I think after my last trip to Rupert, uh, I did a class visit in Campbell River. And one of the students had um, gone to one of the dentists that went to the conference Oh, uh, the COVID, the famous yeah. in Europe or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we all had to self isolate for two weeks, and none of us could get tests because they, at that point, they were rationing them. Uh, so I was self isolating in Hague Brown House, which is on two acres of very lovely land by the river, but um, not, you know, I have asthma and there's lots of flowers, so I was constantly coughing. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just assuming that I got it. <laughs> so that's the mood I wrote the second yeah. draft in it. And uh, everyone died. <laughs> so when I was writing the, the, the uh, when my editor read it, she went, well, it's an improvement. <laughs> Too much drama, though. Let's can find we, a happy medium. Can we have some of them between. not die? <laughs> So for so bit, spoiler alert. So for the third book, not everybody dies. But quite a few <laughs> people die. Okay. Uh, and you're not is, telling who, which characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I could. Like, Please I'm don't. A, I'm a I, horrible I'm sure every, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Okay. Yeah, no one would watch Game of Thrones with me because yeah. Cause, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm still only on season three on Blu-ray, so please just. Don't. Well, there's this amazing scene <laughs> with Cersei. <laughs> Is it Tian Tiani? Tiane. Tiane. Okay, so uh, you 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 began acting at the age of six, I gather. Is that right? It it, it wasn't acting. That was my first stage performance when okay. I knew that I wanted to do performing. Yeah. Yeah. So you've come a long way. You you, you did uh, uh, school plays in in Kitimat, is that correct? Uh, in Terrace. In Terrace, okay, here, and and now you're in this big motion picture. So your your career is clicking along at a pretty good yeah. rate here, I guess. I say, I'd say I've done pretty well so far. <laughs> yeah. So what was that? What was that like you know, when you tell us? You know how you got the the heard about the audition and that process of going for this movie. Um, well, my mom found the um, casting call for it, and then she said that uh, we should try it, or that I should try it. Mom found out later that she could try out for a part as well. So we're lucky enough to be like 45 minutes to an hour drive from Kitimat. So we were able to do our audition like in Kitimat, and Eden was there. <laughs> Eden was there at our audition. Amazing. So yeah. you got to, you got to meet somebody you look up to, and and yeah. were you uh, a fan of the the books prior to auditioning? Um, or uh, I should say of this book. I'm, I'm That's little, okay. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Never mind. Little, but hey! you read it. You did read it though. Eventually, I'm sure. I've read it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you can get Eden to sign your copy if she hasn't done that already. She I was, did that. Okay. I brought my copy right. to set, and I got Eden to sign it, and I okay. got. The entire cast is on my book. Amazing. Oh. <laughs> so, so what was that like going from you know school play to uh, to being on this kind of movie set? The biggest thing that I noticed right away was makeup. Okay. Because <laughs> stage makeup is gross. They cake it on, and the makeup was a lot more subtle for a film. Okay. And then also just acting um, on stage. Yeah, it it's all dependent on where your audience is. Because, yes, you have audience members up close in the front, but you also have audience members way in the back. And uh, you, you in a, sort of have to exaggerate, like, your facial expressions and your movements, whereas on screen, the camera's, like, right there in your face. So you can, again, you can be a lot more subtle and more realistic, I suppose. Are you looking forward to doing it again, or are you, are you going to be applying to, for, for other f films? Absolutely. Yeah. I loved it. It was amazing. I would definitely want to keep doing it. Terrific. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while, film acting. And so this was a mother-daughter affair for you guys. Your role, you were... And Edith. Edith, yes. Yeah. So you were, you were on the beach there at Monkey Beach in that, that scene. I recognize you, even with your mask on. I can tell who you Thank were. You. 
And your daughter, who who are you? What was your character in the film? I'm one of the gossip girls. I'm Jane. Okay. Yeah. I really didn't like you in the movie, but that's, that's supposed to be the way it is, I guess. Yeah. Got, got you did it well. Name. Yeah. Yeah, my niece so, was the other one. Okay. <laughs> And it, w was that a big leap for her? Because she's such a nice, uh, non-gossipy girl in real life? Or was that... Uh, for your niece, I'm talking, Eden. Was, oh. uh, <laughs> it was a good acting performance? It was good yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah, go. So, Erica, what was that like, first of all, A, for you in the, the experience of being on in, in the film, but also uh, being there alongside your daughter? Were you guys... You weren't in any scenes together, I don't think, were you? We weren't in any scenes together, no. Um, I did approach some people um, to see if I could take her to one of my okay. set days um, yeah. because she wouldn't have been able to meet everybody or Adam Beach um, <laughs> if, if she right. only went to her set day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, we got the A-OK, -okay, and so she joined yeah. me on um, actually the scene where we're filming on, on the beach at night. Right. Yeah. And most importantly, got to meet Adam Beach. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, there, there was a couple, couple big stars in this film. I'm a huge fan of Glenn Gould. Uh, I, I, I know, I know him uh, as well, and he's a super awesome guy. Love his work, his uh, character on Cardinal uh, CTV. Uh, he seems to be in a lot, but he, uh, I, I sort of, I like Glenn so much. Uh, it was hard to watch him be such an, an a hole <laughs> in this film, but he, he did it well though. But what was that like to act with some of these? Uh, pretty heavy duty Canadian uh, indigenous actors like Adam Beach and Glenn Gould. It was pretty overwhelming. I was super nervous. <laughs> um, it was all very, very new to me. Uh, acting behind a, a camera is very, very different than being on stage in theater. Yeah. Very different. And then um, I noticed that I did my best to learn the lines that were in the script and that everybody else just sort of winged it. <laughs> And so, so there, there was a, a lot of improv going on, but that yeah. wasn't, you didn't get the memo on that. <laughs> no. Memorization is yeah. a lot more loose on film set. <laughs> yeah. When you're in theater, you have to word for word, um, punctuation by punctuation. So are you, are you from, are you, are you Heisla or are you from Kids and Kalem or? I'm Nishka. You're Nishka, um, okay. But my dad is, is from Bella Bella. Tiane, did it make you want to get out on the on the water? And do you, have you had much opportunity to do that, to be on a boat and be out there in, in places like Douglas Channel or on the coast yourself, do any fishing and that kind of sort of thing? Not recently or lately, but um, definitely when I was younger and I like lived up in the Ness, yeah. um, I definitely go out on the boat with my dad and I think with Papa sometimes, with Mom. Um, yeah, with with her dad and I, and and she'd take three hour naps because of the yeah. nice rocky water. So, did you guys make grease? Do you do that at all? Your family, in the, in the Nasser? Her her dad does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Well, I, I just got myself a little jar too today from my uncle Wake, so I'm looking forward to taking that home. Eden, do you foresee your your books being translated into films going forward? Are you thinking about kind of movies now? Is that or could you see yourself taking a a shot at uh, screenwriting going forward, giving yourself a second chance? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> but do you like this business of having your books turn into movies and TV shows? Uh, I, I like it, at, um, but it isn't something that I'm interested in doing. It's, uh, it's, uh, it would be like uh, my experience with writing poetry. It's a right. completely different form. You need right. a completely different set of... Uh, you, well, you, you need a, a temperament that's not so ordinary. Right. <laughs> so, if, if, but if the right person comes along, like, uh -huh. uh, like, uh, Michelle Latimer and, and, uh, Loretta and other people who you've worked with recently, mm -hmm. you would do that process again. I think that's, that's kind of the end of my books though. Uh. Yeah. I mean, you'll have to write some more. <laughs> the only one, the only one that hasn't been turned is like uh, blood sports, and right. that was uh, very, very bloody. <laughs> okay. That might have to be like rated R or above, I guess. Yeah. I can't see. Slasher film. Yeah. There you go. Well, okay. I, I want to work on a trashy band council yeah. romance next. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I can't write romance, okay. but I can write trashy romance. So it'll be like the, the Harlequin uh, 
uh, the uh, Harlequin yeah, Band there Office. There you go, yeah. Harlequin <laughs> Band Office. <laughs> well, would you would you guys love that? Would you would you go out and buy that? Yeah. Well, we've got a test audience for you here. Tell your publisher it's it'd be a hot seller for sure. Okay. Well, let's let everybody get uh, get home safely this evening. Thank you very much to our audience here tonight, to everybody that made, brought this uh, this wonderful book to reality on the big screen, and to all the cast and crew that are down celebrating the world premiere at uh, VIF in Vancouver. From all of us here at the Tillicum Twin Theater, thank you very much, and, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all for coming out. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>